Do you truly know the anatomy of the penis? Stay tuned and find out. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the penis. It's more complex than you think. You think that it's what you see, but it is made of a complex structures. It is actually the penis go deep inside beyond the pubic bone. So I'm going to show you the slide that I have. So those of you that can see the slide here, this is a picture of a man is cut in half that's parallel. So you can see in relation that the penis is underneath the bladder. So you have the bladder and then in between the bladder and the penis is the prostate gland. The prostate gland is normally the size of a walnut and the prostate gland is where semen is made and the prostate gland make the semen and it is then mixed with the sperm that is made in the testicles and then from the prostate it goes through the urethra it's where you pee that's where seminal fluid come out and you can see in the picture here the prostate gland is between the bladder and the penis and then the urethra goes through the prostate and the penis muscle is actually goes even deeper past your pubic bone and the penis is actually made out of three muscles so you have the corpus cavernosum which goes on both sides of the penis shaft and then you have the glands which is the tip so if you see in the picture here the glands is part of the corpus spongiosum and the corpus spongiosum is where the urethra goes through. So you see in the picture here, the glands is connected to the corpus spongiosum, and then that goes to the bulb of the penis. And the uh, corpus cavernosum makes up the main shaft of the penis. It goes in and it's spread out like a wishbone. And it actually goes deeper past the pubic bone, as you can see in the picture here. So the woman clitoris is like the corpus cavernosum. And the woman also have the corpus spongiosum, but that is more located in the bulb of the vestibule. So let's just focus on the penis at this point. So in the picture here, you can see that it is kind of three muscles all in one. And then the next muscles that you see that is part of the pelvic muscle is the spongiosus muscle, which you can see on the picture here. It wraps around the base of the penis and it actually helps with erection. And then you also see the muscle that is called the ischial cavernosus, which kind of goes along the crura, which is along the corpus cavernosum crura, which also helps with erection as well. So those two muscles are comprised of what the pelvic muscles are. And the pelvic muscles help with not only starting and stopping urine, but also help with erection and ejaculation. But those muscles are surrounding the base of the penis and it also help with getting the seminal fluid out. So all in all, there's a structure that you see that's the penis that you see visible, but there's also structure behind the pubic bone as well. And that the penis is actually made up of, of three muscles, one on both sides, which is the corpus cavernosum. And then you have the corpus spongiosum, which is called the spongy muscle of the penis. And then right after the penis, you have the prostate gland and then you have the bladder. That's why you will notice that when you have an enlarged prostate, it affects your urine stream because the fluid from the bladder has to go through the prostate gland to go out through the penis. And if the prostate is enlarged, it's going to press down on that urethra and therefore the urine stream is not as strong as it used to be. And also you have double dribble. And that's the reason why that you also urinate often at nighttime because the prostate gland is enlarged in its location right between the penis and the bladder. So that makes sense. But interestingly, the nerve that is responsible for the erection actually is the parasympathetic nerve, which actually goes around the prostate on both sides of the prostate that goes to the penis. But the nerve for the feeling of the penis come from the pudendal nerve, 
which is from a different nerve pathway than the nerve that is responsible for erection. So that's why when you have an enlarged prostate or even prostate cancer and prostate procedures, procedures such as prostatectomy where surgery to remove the prostate, the nerve that is responsible for erection in the penis is located right next to the prostate. So oftentimes that gets involved as well and that's where the parasympathetic nerve is at. So parasympathetic nerve create an erection. Sympathetic nerve is really more of ejaculation and parasympathetic is the nerve that's responsible for relaxation and eating and breathing. So it's called the eat and breathe nerve pathway. And the sympathetic nervous system is really more for emergency and stress response. So I hope this is helpful that the penis muscle is actually more complex than you think along with its blood vessels and nerve innervation and we're still finding out about it and also interestingly the fascia that wrap around the penis the penis actually has two fascia the superficial fascia which is the colle's fascia c o l l e apostrophe s connect to the fascia in the abdominal wall or in your abdomen So in men that have, let's say, umbilical hernia, that means that the fascia is weakened. That may also affect your erection as well too, because the abdominal wall is also connected to the fascia of the penis. So a tidbit to remember as well too. So I hope you find this helpful in discussing the details of the. penis muscle and the fascia and its connection to the abdominal wall and let me know what you think if you have any questions having said that my goal is to make sexual education available for everyone and to create a sexual revolution to empower men to have sexual independence so i hope that you will follow me along on the sexual revolution and having said that i created a safe and discreet space where i coach you to get out of ed for real solutions without medication and without surgery is called the modern man club check it out the link here as well as the link in the show note it's a space where i will show you the pathway to get out of ed that actually will work no matter what stage you're in so I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you in the next one. Are you struggling and frustrated in finding a solution for ED? Well, I have just the thing for you. It's called the Modern Man Club, led by yours truly, Dr. Ann. Together, we're redefining male sexuality and embracing a holistic approach to overcoming ED without medication or surgery. I will provide a protective environment for a community and proven strategy to overcoming ED. It is a safe place, expert coaching by me and my team. We provide holistic approach to overcoming ED and an empowering community of men with ED supporting one another and lots and lots of educational resources. Visit mensexualityclub.com at the link here on my right. and connect with us and reclaim control over your sexual health. I'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Sexual Health for Men podcast. If you love this episode, then please take a screenshot on your phone and post it on Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you post. And be sure to tag me and let me know why you like this episode and what you like to hear in the future. That will help me know what's great for you, and I would love to give you the most incredible free gift designed to help you improve performance quickly. Go to my website at sexualhealthformenpodcast.com to get the book, The Five Common Costly Mistakes Men Make When Facing ED. I would appreciate it if you subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, and just know that you can have sexual vitality for life. I appreciate you. Until next time.